The alveoli are the site of gas exchange between the atmosphere and the blood. Deoxygenated blood flows all around the alveoli so that oxygen can be picked up and carbon dioxide can be removed via diffusion. Oxygen is always in a higher concentration in the alveoli because it is always receiving fresh atmosphere as we breathe. The deoxygenated blood will always have a lower concentration of oxygen compared to the alveoli because the cells have been aerobically respiring and using up the oxygen. Notice the cells produce carbon dioxide, so the blood always has a higher concentration of carbon dioxide compared to the alveoli. You need to be able to label the alveoli. The tube leading into the alveoli is a bronchiole. The wall of the alveolus has a thin, moist layer. The capillaries, which are blood vessels, surround the alveolus. The capillary wall is one cell thick. The blood flowing through the capillaries has red blood cells and blood plasma. The red blood cells can carry oxygen and carbon dioxide because they have a special molecule called hemoglobin. But some carbon dioxide is also found dissolved in the blood plasma. On a diagram, you will need to be able to add arrows showing the direction that oxygen and carbon dioxide are diffusing to. Oxygen is always moving into the blood via diffusion. Carbon dioxide is always moving into the alveoli via diffusion. The body needs efficient gas exchange to take place. The alveoli are adapted to facilitate this. They have a special shape which provides a large surface area so more efficient gas exchange can occur. The alveolar wall is thin to reduce the diffusion distance and allow for more efficient gas exchange. The lining is moist so gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide dissolve and can diffuse quicker through the alveolar wall. The alveoli have a rich blood supply because they're surrounded by capillaries to maximize the rate of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The capillaries themselves have a wall that is one cell thick again to maximize the rate of diffusion by reducing the diffusion distance. In the next lesson, we will look at the composition of the atmosphere.